So this is my wheel farm and it's a bit small. So what if we transformed it to be 100 times bigger? I'm only giving myself 50 days to do this. If I fail, this vault containing thousands of diamonds will explode. Let's get started. I want to build this really far away in a flower forest. Since I need to build this quick, let's use a Minecraft seed finder. All I need to do is enter my world seed, then look for the biome I need. Any of these seed finders will work for this. So I found a flower forest at these coordinates. Before I can start this build, I need to get out there. After travelling for a while, I've arrived at the flower forest in question. This should work for this project. Now, normally I'd build an airport portal for a project like this, but that won't be necessary. If I go in this direction, you'll be able to see the bad omen farm I bought a while back. I'll be using this portal for the duration of this project. Now, let's get to work. In order to build the insane wheel farm I have planned, I have to build a bunch of other stuff first. This wheel farm will contain 1024 sheep. That's 64 sheep per wheel colour. I'm going to need a lot of dye. We can make dyes from flowers, which is why we're building in a flower forest. Let's gather the resources needed to farm these flowers. With these resources, let's travel back to the flower forest and get started. I'm making a quick stop at the gold farm to repair my tools since I'll be removing a lot of blocks. After that quick tool repair session, I've returned to the flower forest with everything we need to build some flower farms. I want to preserve as much of this natural terrain as possible, so I'll be building these underground. Let's start this first farm. This farm is quite large, so I need to start by removing a bunch of blocks, leaving me with this large room. This should be enough space. I've went ahead and filled my inventory with what I need, so let's build this flower farm. After only 5 minutes of placing blocks, this farm is finished. To turn this thing on, all I need to do is activate this lever. The water will stop flowing, bone meal will be used in the grass, and then the water will activate again. Since I don't have any bone meal or a storage solution currently, I'll turn this off for now. Now, I need to build 4 more of these farms. Each farm will give me 2 types of flowers. Since I was going to be clearing blocks for a while, I set up a haste beacon nearby which sped up the process of building these farms by a lot. Due to the way flowers generate, I ended up placing 3 of these farms in close proximity, hence why I'm able to quickly walk between them. I still need to build 2 more farms which will require a 100 block long tunnel to access. Fortunately, these farms were also built side by side, which meant I was able to get them finished quickly. Now that all the flower farms are in position, I should probably explain why I need more than one. Flower farming can be quite complex. It's not just a simple case of building it in the correct biome. You need to build them in certain parts of the biome to get the correct flowers. I knew before starting this project that I wanted these farms to be underground, so I created a creative world using the hardcore world seed and went out to the flower forest I would use. I cleared a bunch of space underground and placed a grass platform. I set up two command blocks which would automatically remove any tall grass that would generate on the platform. Then I used bone meal to generate the flower pattern. I could then use that pattern to work out where each farm had to be. One thing to remember if you do a project like this is flower generation is height specific. If I went two blocks up, the flower pattern would be completely different. With that short explainer out of the way, let's continue with this project. So these five flower farms I just built will generate six different types of flowers, giving me blue, orange, red, yellow, magenta and light grey dyes. That's six out of the 16 dyes I need for this wool farm. So, how do I generate the rest? I build more farms. If I build a cactus farm, I can turn that cactus into green dye by smelting it. I went ahead and collected the resources needed for this thing. It's a small farm, hence why the resources are in small amounts. I still need to go and collect the cacti needed for this. I'll collect them from this desert, close to my villager area. Now, let's get back to the flower forest so that I can build it. Just like I did before, I'll be building this underground. I'm going to position it between the first two flower farms I built. Building this was straightforward. I cleared out a relatively large room, then built the farm in record time. Now this farm is operational, but I still have a problem. The furnace that smelts the cactus won't work without a fuel source. No, I won't be using coal for this. I'll be using carpets as a fuel source since I can dupe them. Jumping into a creative world real quick, here's how you build one. This design has been around for a few years and is quite reliable. I've done a short on this in the past. Back in the hardcore world, I got it built and it's now connected to the furnace, allowing for the cactus to be turned into green dye. Now, that's the first seven dyes dealt with. Next up, I'd like to work on the lime dye. With this, I have two ways of making it. I could combine the green dye from the wool farm with some white dye to create it, or I could build a dedicated farm. I'll be building a farm for this one. I can turn sea pickles into lime dye by smelting it. So I went ahead and started to collect all the resources I need for this farm. I'm also going to pick up some rails so that I can place a hopper minecarts during this build. Before I return to the flower forest, I need to travel out to the coral reef to collect the last few items I need. Sea pickles and some coral blocks. 
There we go. Now on the way back to the flower forest, I'm making a quick stop at the gold farm to repair my gear. Arriving back in the flower forest, I quickly made my way underground and have selected this wall for the sea pickle farm. I went ahead and cleared out a small room which should be enough space for this farm. Then I quickly built the farm making sure to place all the main carts before they became inaccessible. Since this farm needs a furnace, I also went ahead and set up a carpet duper to fuel said furnace. Even with that being finished, this farm still won't run as it requires bone meal. I'll be addressing that later on. Now that's 8 dies dealt with. So far I've addressed 8 out of the 16 dyes needed for this project. Next up, let's work on the brown dye. Farming brown dye in large amounts is very simple, you just need cocoa beans. I should have plenty of these in the jungle near my villager area. I could just fly around here harvesting all the cocoa beans I'd ever need, but let's build a farm for them instead. If you want a quick farm design, all you need to do is place a pillar of logs like this. Then cover them in cocoa beans. You could then wait for them to grow, or you could use bone meal. You could also use pistons to harvest them all at once. The only issue is this system is a bit slow for my needs, so let's build a proper farm instead. I went ahead and started to collect all the resources needed for this farm. This is going to be the smallest farm I've done so far. For this farm to work, I'd also need bone meal, but I'll be done with that later. Now, let's return to the flower forest. Arriving back in the flower forest, I once again made my way underground and have picked out this section next to the sea pickle farm for this build. I immediately got to work by removing a bunch of these blocks, leaving me with the room needed to start building this thing. With that out of the way, let me fill my inventory with the materials I just gathered, and now we can build this farm. Since this farm was incredibly small, building it only took a few minutes, and with that farm being complete, I could technically start using it. All I'd have to do is flick this lever which would activate some redstone, then start placing some cocoa beans, but all of that requires bone meal, so let's address that. Many different farms in this area will require bone meal, so I need to build a fairly large bone meal farm. Plus this will also allow me to build up a supply of bone blocks so they can be really good for building. I already have a farm design in mind for this. I've used bone meal farms a few times in this world so far. Most recently I built one within my ocean monument transformation. These shulkers contain all the resources needed to build that farm. So let's return to the flower forest. I think I'm going to place this bone meal farm behind the sea pickle farm we built earlier. This farm will be the largest one I've done so far in this area, so I'll need to clear a lot of space. I got to work clearing the room needed for this farm. It took quite a while due to the sheer size of the thing. It was that big that I had to move my beacon a few times. The amount of space I've ended up with here is insane. I gave myself a bit of extra room just in the off chance that I wanted to add some extra stuff. Now, let's get this bone mill farm built. Building this farm was a straightforward process. I went layer by layer, carefully placing each block. One simple mistake will break this farm, so I made sure not to make any. Since I've built this before, the whole building process was faster than normal. After finishing the build, I filled each dispenser with some bone meal to speed up the startup time of this farm. Then I gave it a quick test. As you can see, bone meal is being made, but it currently has nowhere to go, so I've went ahead and built a simple storage system. This farm will produce 15,000 bone meal per hour, so I ended up doing three storage slices. In the back I've built a shulker loader, meaning that I can store millions of bone meal here. Plus it will allow me to easily move bone meal when I need to. Now all I need to do is let this farm run while I work in the area. So far I've built the farms to produce 10 out of the 16 dyes needed for the wool farm. Next up I'd like to work towards the black dye. For this I have two options. I could build a squid farm or build a wither rose farm. Since squid farms are kind of bad, I'm going to build a wither rose farm. The main part of this farm will be the wither, so I'll need to go and collect three wither skulls. I don't have a dedicated farm for this yet, so I'll need to go into the nether and go to the nearest nether fortress to kill a bunch of wither skeletons. These three skulls are only a small part of the farm. I also need all of these resources. I'm going to be building this farm in the end, making use of the central end portal. But before I start building it, I'm going out to the outer end real quick to collect a few stacks of end stone. I'll be using this to cover the farm. So now, with all of that collected, let's build this farm. This weather rose farm was designed by ANX04. It's very simple and quick to set up. I managed to get all of this built in only 5 minutes. To start using this farm, I first need to spawn the weather. After that, I need to come over here and start placing snow blocks. A pumpkin will then be dispensed, turning this into a snow golem. That snow golem will then be killed by the weather, creating a weather rose. The good thing about this farm is I keep all the pumpkins, and when the snow golems die, they drop enough snowballs to make more golems. One thing I am going to do is expand the storage for shields. That way I won't need to refill it as often. With this farm being finished, I'm going to use it for 20 minutes so that I have enough weather roses for the wool farm. That should be plenty of weather roses. I'm just going to leave that weather there for now. Killing it wouldn't be worth it. 
so I won't be building any more farms for the other dyes I need, as I can craft the rest of them from the dyes I've farmed so far, meaning that the dye collection phase is complete. So real quick before I move on to the final part of this project, I'd like to ask if you could subscribe. I'm doing a challenge right now where each subscriber I get means I have to remove 1000 blocks in my hardcore world. Last episode, I got 24 subscribers, so I had to remove 24,000 blocks. If you'd like to add to this, subscribe. So moving on, I think I should get all the farms I've built today running, generating all the dyes needed for the wool farm. First, I need to go around all the flower farms, adding a storage system to each. I'm just going with the basic storage system for now. Then, all I need to do is fill each farm with bone meal, meaning I can turn the farms on. Speaking of storage systems, the wool farm I'm going to build will need a huge one. I want it to be colourful, so I'll use some of the dyes I just collected along with these sheep to make up a bunch of different colours of wool. That and all these resources I've collected. Back over in the flower forest, I need to find a place to build this. I'm going to be terraforming this entire area, so I think I'll build this storage system over here, underground. The idea is that this would eventually be on the surface. Now, let's get this built. This storage system is quite simple. All I've done is set up a storage silo for each of the wool colours. These silos have item filters in the back, allowing for only one wool colour per silo. After getting all those in place, I configured the filters and added the last decorative details. Now, you can clearly see where each wool colour will be stored. I also went ahead and added a switch for the wool farm. I'll connect this up to the wool farm once it's built. I also added a door below, which I'll use to access the rest of the farms. On the other end of the hallway, I have another door. This will lead out to the surface later, but for now, it will remain underground. So now after doing all that prep work, I can finally start building this wool farm. For this, I'm going to be going with the wool farm design I built back at the starter base, but it will be a lot larger. I'll be placing part of this underground, so I'll need to start clearing space for it. I planned all this out prior to recording this episode, now that I think about it, I could have made this smaller. Either way, this farm will suit my needs. After removing a few thousand blocks, the space needed for this farm is ready. Getting this farm up and running is going to take a bit of time. First, I'll need to build the farm using these resources I've gathered. I'll also need a lot of sheep. I'm going with 64 sheep per wool colour, which means I'll need 1024 sheep. Now here's the thing, I've already been working on getting all the sheep. If I go behind this wall, you'll see I already have a bunch of sheep here. I caught some from the flower forest above a while back and brought them down here to start breeding. Now, let's start building this farm. The size of this farm is insane. I've never farmed this many sheep at once before. As I've used this design before, building it was fairly straightforward. When it came to getting the sheep in place, I moved them out of the breeding area one at a time and got them positioned in the farm. Then I dyed them to whatever colour I needed. After getting them all in place for this section, I started building the next. I got faster and faster with each layer. I also had a few YouTube videos playing in the background while working on this, which helped speed this up. After no time at all, the farm was complete. After finishing the farm, I went ahead and connected the farm redstone to the activation circuit in the storage room. That and I placed an item stream allowing for the wool to be transported to the storage area. Now, before I turn this thing on, I need to go through the entire system filling it with shields. Good thing I have an arm farm. With that done, I could turn this on, producing lots of wool. Now, I've just had a look at the time I have remaining for this project and it's only 10 days, so let's make this area look nice. For this build, I'm making use of some extra materials I had lying around from when I did the ocean monument transformation. I wanted this build to be circular but also blend into the terrain, hence why I'm doing a lot of terraforming. I also wanted it to stand out, hence why I'm using lots of bright colours. And with the last day coming to an end, I finished this insane project.